Good afternoon, Merlin Gonzalez here, um, providing you FHL Live. Uh, in this edition, we're going to talk to Unai Andres. He is a GS, GIS analyst for uh, the Police Center and also for um, SAP, under the direction of Savvy. Um, he will be our guest speaker on Thursday at the Table Talk at 11 o'clock until 12 noon. Together with him are uh, three other people, guest speakers that I'm really looking forward for this uh, table talk. So that's Thursday, April 9 at 11 a.m. Um, but before that, I'd like to, to start with devotion. I was speaking with Unai uh, earlier today that uh, many of us, you know, especially if you live, live in maybe just less than uh, a thousand square feet of, of space and you're alone and uh, all you have is the TV and, and some other things and uh, you, you might be feeling lonely or maybe anxious. So I always want to start with uh, devotion. And this one is from um, the, the commentary. Actually, I took it from William Barclay and um, about two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I was, maybe two weeks ago, I was uh, drawn to uh, Beatitudes, uh, which is what they said, the greatest teaching uh, ever written. Uh, it was way ahead of, of their time. And also even now, a way ahead of our time. But I'd just like to focus on one of the Beatitudes, which is, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. So that's Matthew 5, 8. So uh, what uh, Matthew was saying, uh, well, actually Jesus recorded by Matthew. What Jesus is saying here that blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. So why is it that, you know, that he's saying that if our hearts are pure, that we will see God. And uh, on this commentary here, I just want to share it with you. Uh, during this time of COVID-19, many times, you know, uh, sometimes, okay, let me just uh, put the phrase there. Sometimes in our uh, attempt to help other people, sometimes our motive is not there. And I think this is what blessed are the pure in heart. And, you know, let's be honest. I mean, you and I uh, are, are guilty of like, hey, look at me, you know, I'm helping others and this and that. And uh, so this is the time that uh, we, we, we want to just slow down and take a look at the condition of our heart because this is what um, this beatitude is talking about. So uh, a question that, that you may want to uh, ask when, when you help others or when you do some good things. And believe it, believe it, believe me, that Jesus always also say that, if you if you do good things, go on the mountaintop and um, and proclaim it, not for yourself, but for the glory of God. That's the difference of it. All right. So uh, and, and you will see we have Facebook Live and, you know, we give away food, but not for ourselves. But that's to bring glory to God. So there's a difference there. So uh, something that, that at the core of it, we need to take a look at at our heart. The question to ponder is that, is our work done from motives of service or from motives of pay, right? You know, uh, yes, all of us need to get paid. But again, in, in, in the process of, of giving, is our work done from motives of service or from motives of pay? Another thing is that, is our service given from selfless motives or from motives of self-display? And again, you know, just be honest, all of us, are guilty of that. And uh, so uh, we just need to take a look, slow down and take really a look at the uh, condition of our heart. To examine one's own motives is daunting and shaming thing. For there are few things in this world that even the best of us do with complete unmixed motive, completely un unmixed motive. So we see only what we are able to see. And sometimes, you know, um, some people say, well, you know, I only, uh, that's my perspective. And that's why 
sometimes it's good to to bring some encouragement for other people and uh because again we only see what what we we are able to see which means that sometimes we need encouragement and sometimes we need people to speak into our lives so in in a sense uh what this commentary is saying about matthew 5 8 blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god he said that oh the bliss of a man whose motives are absolutely pure for that man will someday be able to see god isn't that great you know that oh bliss of the man whose motives are absolutely pure for that man will someday be able to see god and i think you know uh, god lives within us you know we we know that the spirit lives within us and uh we shall see god if our heart is connected with the spirit of god so hopefully that uh gave you uh, some perspective uh some reminders and uh, i'm going to bring up uh unai here hello unai welcome hello how's everyone doing oh uh i'm doing well and hope uh you know our audience are, are doing well as again so if you are just joining us or maybe you are watching this on the replay um we are talking with Unai. So Unai, uh, give us a uh, brief introduction of yourself. Hi, so I'm a GIS and data analyst uh, with the Polo Center at IUPUI. Uh, I mainly work with one of our biggest programs, Savvy, which I'll, I hope a lot of you have heard of before. Um, Savvy is a platform where we provide data research and training resources for anybody in the community. We mainly focus in central Indiana, but we have information available for the whole state a lot of the times. Um, I've been working for the Polo Center for about three years. I came to the Polo Center after graduating from Polo State um, and after working for the Mansi Delaware Food Hub Partnership as well. Um, that's where my love for food came up. Um, I specialize in studying access to food and food resources and the whole food related environment. Um, and that's my passion. I think that everybody should have good access to food, whether it is via groceries, via agriculture, or via emergency resources, uh, as I believe that food is a uh, human right. Yeah, um, I, you know, the first time I, I met Unai uh, was he was doing a presentation at WFYI, uh, I think uh, summer or early fall. And uh, I really, you know, I'm a fan of Unai as far as really detail. It, I mean, they are really detail oriented and I learn a lot, you know, all of us need, need each other. Uh, some have specialty in data and in, in uh, really granular information and some are more of a visionary, bigger picture and that's me. So, um, but yeah, that's why I invited him at the table talk last month. And now he's going to be part of the table talk again on Thursday at uh, 11 o'clock. Uh, that's April 9, and that's online. So uh, don't forget about that. Share that with other people uh, because we're going to provide some really updated information. So talking about updated information, Unai, uh, could you uh, share with us uh, what you're finding out there, some really uh important information that that you guys are finding out yes definitely um so we at the polo center we have been trying to report as much data as possible really related to this pandemic that it's going on uh so later net latest numbers in case people have not heard them we have 5507 positive cases of COVID 19 in the state of indiana right now um of those about 40 percent of those so 2141 are in Marion County, which is by far the area with the highest numbers. Um, there has been so far only 28,000 people that have been tested, almost 29,000 people that have been tested. Um, so, and there has been 173 deaths. And this data, it's latest data reported as of 12, 20 p.m. today. Mm -hmm. And those numbers come through the Indiana State Department of Health. Um, so I'm gonna, if Merlin allows me, I'm gonna share my screen. Sure. And then I'll talk while I share my screen. 
Sí. There we go. Um, so on Savvy, we have put out a resource of data and maps, informational maps related to the coronavirus. So if you go to Savvy.org, when you're there on one of the first things that you will see pop up here is our coronavirus data hub. You can click on it and it will take you to the hub itself, or you can just go by typing Savvy.org slash coronavirus data hub. And here we are putting maps and dashboards related to uh, coronavirus continuously. So we're trying to update all the data as, as quickly as we can, and we're relating new information. Um, one of those would be our tracking Indiana COVID-19 cases, which it's this one right here. And it has, uh, it allows you to see how the cases have been reported, how many cases have been reported, reported by date. You can see the actual numbers right now when it was last updated. And it has a nice map that allows you to see um, the number of cases by county, but also the number of cases by a thousand people, which I find really interesting that there's uh, some areas that might have number of reported cases, but they are real, really, really rural areas, such as Decatur, where we have 90 cases that have been reported right there out of 26,000 people that live in the county. So that's about 339 cases per 1,000 people, per 100,000 people. Um, so in compared to Marion County, which has the highest case number, but it doesn't have such a high number of cases per 1,000 people. Um, so this is one of the great resources that I like. Um, it gets updated. We have analysts working on these ones all the time. Um, so if you're having issues, you're always welcome to email us or contact us. You can contact, um, let's see, there we go. If you have any issues, you can always click this button here that says let us know. Or if you have any recommendations of things you would like to see related to this coronavirus pandemic, if you click here, it will let us know. You can tell us what you would like to see or any issues you're encountering. Another great resource that I will be talking more on on Thursday about is the Marin County Food and Meal Resources Map uh, we have created for Marin County in partnership with United Way of Central Indiana. I'm going to put it up here so people can see it. Um, so this map shows food pantries and soup kitchens that have reported to be open. Uh, we know that there are not all of them. We, um, the sources that we use require people to let them know that they're still open. So if your food pantry or soup kitchen is still open as a to-go or curbside service, please let Indie Hunger Network know that you're still open. So they can put it on their website as well. And people in the community can see it and then we will be updating it here. And then we have a layer of information here, which are like new emergency food access sites. And these are new sites that are put together. Uh, so in the parks is providing hot meals and hot and boxes to go in certain parts of the community. There's community centers that are providing uh, food services, food related services. A lot of uh, IPS schools are now providing meal boxes or meal services on site in partnership, some of them with cleaners. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's some churches as well that are providing inside service meals. Um, and then the Indiana Housing Authority is providing as well senior meal deliveries for specific apartment sites. So, you have a question, Merlin? Uh, yes, yeah, this is, uh, uh, this information is very, very uh, important. And I'm really uh, glad that, uh, we have you try this and you're able to uh, share your your screen now for my own benefit though my uh my question is that i don't know if you have the information yet but when i have the booklet that you guys um distributed at the uh about the food deserts in uh, mm -hmm. the city in the fall uh i've been sharing that and i tell them hey these are the statistics before covid 19 happened correct 
So do you have like maybe uh, you can share Thursday that's like uh, the, the comparison, the jump in the, the food insecurity in the food desert? Yes. So the food desert maps that we had in the report that we put together on fall 2019, um, those are grocery, grocery store based uh, food deserts. And this will be these gray areas in here. Um, as of right now, we don't really know which grocery stores have been closed. As far as I know, all the major grocery stores are still open. Mm -hmm. So the service they provide is the same. Okay. I think the sector that has been affected the most is the nonprofit sector. Those provided emergency resources. Mm -hmm. So a lot of food pantries and soup kitchens are the ones that have closed their services. Wow. Yeah, well, uh, I can understand that, you know, for as far as our food pantries, you know, missional food pantries um, affiliated with Faith, Hope and Love, um, they they said, because we had a food distribution today, they said that their food pantry is almost all gone last time. So now we're coming into the new uh, month and I'm glad that we had some new uh, donors uh, of food. But, you know, as you know, even uh, nonprofits need need uh, financials uh, mm -hmm. to, be able to provide, uh, you know, for the operation, for procurement and, and all kinds of things. So um, I think so. Yes. And, that, for, and for that, there we go. I had to change the setup here so you can see better uh, for those nonprofit organizations that are in need of some financial assistance to be able to keep providing uh, their meal services or food patterned items. I recommend that you apply for the mm -hmm. COVID-19 uh, served fund that United Way in partnership with the Lean Endowment has put together. Um, and that's how a lot of these programs are functioning right now. Um, so you click on this link on the map, it'll take you to Central Indiana, COVID-19, and it's to provide funds oh, for people that are, and you can see who has already been funded and it's for people that are providing food access, childcare, um, services for minorities and immigrants, et cetera. So. And what, what's the um, URL or the website on that again? It's through United Way of Central Indiana. So okay. if you go to uwci.org slash COVID-19 dash dash CERF, C-E-R-F, which is uh, Community Economic Relief Fund, uh, you can see the guidelines to apply for this uh, money to be able to provide services. Wow, um, it's very, uh, that's very helpful. So uh, uh, just before we, we end here, we're, we're probably just going to do uh, the question and answer uh, later on. Um, so what, what's your encouragement out there? What, what do you think, you know, uh, something that, that you would like to share? If, if there's something that you would like to share to um, the those affected or maybe uh, the service providers, what would that be? Well, I, I think that people are focusing too much on the negatives, which are plenty, of course. But we need to be aware that there's a lot of good going on as well. So all these new emergency food access sites did not exist before this pandemic happened, for example. And there are ways to ensure that people are not hungry or they have access to resources. So I I encourage people not to lose hope. There's people still out there trying to do their best to make sure that people, that other um, people in, in, the, in the country can live and survive. So, and by far one thing that I want to encourage everyone is if you're still open, you're providing services, especially for those that might be affected the most, Get the word out there. There's a lot of organizations that are trying to um, to spread the word of who is doing what. And you might want to expand who you're serving. So your normal community, uh, there's some countries that have specific restrictions for a long time, mm -hmm. right? Whether that stage or family income. But at this point, having those restrictions do not should not be considered because yeah. the world is changing. So if you're a missional country that has some requirements, maybe be more more relaxed about them mm -hmm. and realize that people that might be a certain status before this pandemic are in a completely different situation now. Yes, yeah, that's that's great advice. Um, and again, yeah, just like today, um, 
we have three different donors that just all of a sudden contacted us or I contacted them and they were willing to provide help. You know, there's an organization who contacted us who would like to provide a delivery uh, of, of uh, meals and food to the Medicare patients. So, you know, for all of you who know uh, Medicare patients, uh, they are really in need, a group of people that, or patients that are really in need, and now they are homebound and they are not able to to go out, uh, not by, you know, because what the government is saying, but because they really don't have an option. They may be living in a, an elderly apartment, not an assisted living, but in an apartment for elderly, and they may have, uh, they may be living by themselves, and they may not have transportation. And uh, this company said, hey, you know, if you, you have a group of people who would like to provide uh, food for 10 people a week, that's all, for 10 households a week, uh, giving like maybe um, bags of food good for two people for four days, for mm -hmm. 10 people a week, they will deliver those to uh, the people. So uh, some creative things happening. So Unai, unless you, you have anything else you want to share, uh, we'll just close this in prayer. Perfect. I think uh, I'm good to go. Yes, yeah, I'm looking forward uh, on Thursday uh, as well. So uh, let me just close in prayer and bless everyone. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks today. Uh, thank you for Unai, for uh, the talent, the, the gifts that you have given him uh, that really helping the community. I just ask, Lord, that you bless him, keep him safe, and also all his families and friends and colleagues. And Lord, bless the people who are watching this and also who will be watching it. And Lord, uh, I ask that uh, you, you protect us from any germs, virus, and, and increase the resistance of our immune system. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Tunai, thank you so much. I'll see you on Thursday. See you on Thursday. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Bye. Bye.